So I'm just going to sketch a reciprocal function. Worked example, here's the function I'm going to sketch. Now, the way to do it, sketch the polynomial on the bottom. This is a quadratic. Now, when you sketch it, you're going to need to know the turning points, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts. Once you've got that sketched, then we're going to consider what the reciprocal of that sketch is going to look like. So, sketching it. So sketching g of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3, which is the bottom, the y-intercept is going to be equal to 3. Now I found the x-intercepts by letting y equal 0. Uh, it, can, it can be factorized, uh, and I solve it and I get 3 or 1. Uh, I might have had to use completing the square or the quadratic formula, but I got lucky here, you can factorize it. What about uh, turning point? Now given it's a quadratic, we can use negative b over 2a. Subbing that in, we get 2 as the x-coordinate of our turning point. So the y-coordinate of our turning point. Subbing 2 into the original equation, we get a turning point, a y-coordinate of a turning point of negative 1, which finally means, therefore, the turning point is equal to uh, 2, negative 1. So I have a y-intercept, I have an x-intercept, I have a turning point, and now I can sketch that quadratic. So I've done my best here. I've got x-intercepts, a y-intercept, a turning point, and I get a quadratic. Now we need to consider not g of x, which is the bottom of our function, but we now need to think about the reciprocal of it. So there's a few key ideas here that you need to deal with. Probably the easiest one to deal with is these x-intercepts. Now, x-intercepts in a reciprocal function are going to be asymptotes. So I'm going to draw some dotted lines in for some new asymptotes to go there. So there are my asymptotes in line with my x-intercepts of the function on the denominator. Uh, next thing I can probably think about is turning points. There's a turning point here at 2, negative 1 of the original function. There's also going to be a turning point of the reciprocal function. Now the turning point here is a minimum in the reciprocal function, the turning point's going to be a maximum. But I don't know where it is, but obviously I can find where that turning point is by subbing in 2. Because I know that the turning point happens at x equals 2. It happens in line with this turning point. I just don't know what the y-coordinate is. So I'm going to sub 2 into this equation. So a little bit of working. f of 2 equals 1 on 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 3. That's going to be 1 over uh, 4 minus 8, which is minus 4, plus 3, minus 1. 1 over minus 1, negative 1. All right, that's really interesting. So that means, therefore, the turning point of f of x is equal to 2, negative 1. Now, that 2, negative 1, that's the same as that but it's not going to be a uh, maximum, it's going to be a, sorry, it's not going to be a minimum, it's going to be a maximum. Now, it's not always like this. This is very unusual that 2, negative 1 would match up with 2, negative 1. I was expecting that to be 2, like, negative 1 ninth, or 2, uh, negative 5, or 2 something else. It just is a very interesting coincidence that it's 2, negative 1. All right, so I know that the turning point of my new function is going to be here. And what do I know? Let's talk about increasing and decreasing. The function from here to here is decreasing. That means that the function from here to here is going to be increasing. And similarly, the function from here to here is increasing. That means that the reciprocal function is going to be decreasing. So I get this sort of function here. And so you see, we get this kind of opposites type thing. We've got this, which is a local minimum, and now we get this local maximum, getting closer and closer and closer to those asymptotes. Um, now, let's see. Uh, this next bit here, it's heading off, um, off to infinity here. As this function is going off to infinity, um, the reciprocal function should be heading off to zero. All right, and you can see this is a strictly decreasing function from here to here, which means that my function is going to be an increasing function. And I'm going to get a function that looks like... Mm, let's not draw that in just yet. 
Uh, the reason I'm not going to draw that in yet is because I don't know the y-intercept. And knowing the y-intercept would be a nice thing to sketch. So, let's leave that side for a second and do this side because I don't have any y-intercepts that I have to deal with. But I can say that the shape of it is going to look like that. Okay, and you can see that it's strictly decreasing from there to there, heading off to... to um, zero, getting closer and closer to y equals zero, but never ever touching. Here, I'm going to have to sketch that in, but I really, really, really want to know my y-intercept, and to find my y-intercept, I let x equal zero. So I can say that f of zero is equal to one over zero squared minus four times zero uh, plus three, which is um, one over three. One third, which is about there. Okay, so if I draw that in, it's going to look more like... Now, I should really extend that out a little bit. Let's make that a little nicer. Okay, so a little bit like that. And now I feel terrible because quadratics are um, symmetrical and the uh, reciprocal of a quadratic is also symmetrical, but these are not symmetrical. So I need to tidy that up a little bit. All right, so I get... Function heading off this way like this, like that, and like that, symmetrical because it's a quadratic. Quadratics are symmetrical, so are their reciprocals. Um, that is how to sketch a reciprocal function. Start by sketching the function on the denominator, and then start puzzling your way through the rest of it.